Achill Island in County Mayo is the largest of the Irish Isles, and is situated off the west coast of Ireland. It has a population of 2,594. Its area is 148 square kilometres. Achill is attached to the mainland by Michael Davitt Bridge, between the villages of Gob and Corrie and Pol Raithney. A bridge was first completed here in 1887. Other centres of population include the villages of Kiel, Dua, Dema Iga, Dunaver, and Dugort. The parish's main Gaelic football pitch and secondary school are on the mainland at Pol Raithney. Early human settlements are believed to have been established on Achill around 3000 BC. The island is 87% peat bog. The parish of Achill consists of Achill Island, Achillbeg, Anishbigal and the Karan Peninsula. Roughly half of the island, including the villages of Achill Sound and Bunnakuri are in the Gaeltic of Ireland, although the vast majority of the island's population speaks English as their daily language. Our escort into Glenara, from the sketchbook and diary of Elizabeth Thompson. It is believed that at the end of the Neolithic period, Achill had a population of 500 to 1,000 people. The island would have been mostly forest until the Neolithic people began crop cultivation. Settlement increased during the Iron Age, and the dispersal of small promontory forts around the coast indicate the warlike nature of the times. Megalithic tombs and forts can be seen at Slivmore, along the Atlantic Drive and on a Kilbeg. Achill Island lies in the barony of Berishul, in the territory of ancient Umhall, that originally encompassed an area extending from the County Galway slash Mayo border to Acklehead. The hereditary chieftains of Umhall were the O'Malleys, recorded in the area in 814 AD when they successfully repelled an onslaught by the Vikings in Clube. The Anglo-Norman invasion of Connaught in 1235 AD saw the territory of Umhall taken over by the Butlers and later by the de Borgos. The Butler lordship of Berishul continued into the late 14th century when Thomas Le Batiller was recorded as being in possession of Achill and Owl. In the 17th and 18th centuries, there was much migration to Achill from other parts of Ireland, particularly Ulster, due to the political and religious turmoil of the time. For a while there were two different dialects of Irish being spoken on Achill. This led to many townlands being recorded as having two names during the 1824 Ordnance Survey, and some maps today give different names for the same place. Achill Irish still has many traces of Ulster Irish. Grace O'Malley's Castle Caratkill Devnet Castle is a 15th century tower house associated with the O'Malley clan, who were once a ruling family of Achill. Grace O'Malley, or Granuel, the most famous of the O'Malleys, was born on Clare Island around 1530. Her father was the chieftain of the barony of Marisk. The O'Malleys were a powerful seafaring family, who traded widely. Grace became a fearless leader and gained fame as a sea captain and pirate. She is reputed to have met with Queen Elizabeth I in 1593. She died around 1603 and is buried in the O'Malley family tomb on Clare Island. Ackle Mission View of the Colony, prior to 1900. One of Ackle's most famous historical sites is that of the Ackle Mission or the Colony at Dugort. In 1831 the Church of Ireland Reverend Edward Nangle founded a proselytizing mission at Dugort. The mission included schools, cottages, an orphanage, an infirmary and a guesthouse. The colony gave rise to mixed assessments, particularly during the Great Famine when charges of superism were leveled against Edward Nangle. For almost 40 years Edward Nangle edited a newspaper called the Ackle Missionary Herald and Western Witness which was printed in Ackle. Nangle expanded his mission into Mwilin in West Ackle where a school, church, rectory, cottages and a training school were built. Edward's wife Eliza suffered poor health in Ackle and died in 1852. She is buried with six of the Nangle children on the slopes of Slivmore in North Ackle. The Ackle mission began to decline slowly after Nangle was moved from Ackle and was finally closed in the 1880s. When Edward Nangle died in 1883 there were opposing views on his legacy. Railway in 1894, the Westport-Newport railway line was extended to Ackle Sound. The railway station is now a hostel. The train provided a great service to Ackle, but it also is said to have fulfilled an ancient prophecy. Brian Rua Kier Payne had prophesied that carts on iron wheels would carry bodies into Ackle on their first and last journey. In 1894, the first train on the Ackle Railway carried the bodies of victims of the Clue Bay drowning. This tragedy occurred when a boat overturned in Clue Bay, drowning 32 young people. They had been going to meet the steamer which would take them to Scotland for potato picking. The Kirkintillic fire in 1937 almost fulfilled the second part of the prophecy when the bodies of ten victims were carried by rail to Ackle. While it was not literally the last train, the railway would close just two weeks later. 
these people had died in a fire in Abathi and Kirkintilloch. This term referred to the temporary accommodation provided for those who went to Scotland to pick potatoes, a migratory pattern that had been established in the early 19th century. Memorial for the victims of the Clue Bay drowning on June 15, 1894 at Kildavne Graveyard Kildevne Kildevne on the southeast coast of Ackle is named after Street. Dom Knight, or Dymphna, who founded a church there in the 7th century. There is also a holy well just outside the graveyard. The present church was built in the 1700s and the graveyard contains memorials to the victims of two of Ackle's greatest tragedies, the Kirchentilic fire and the Clue Bay drowning. The monastery in 1852, Dr. John McHale, Archbishop of Tuam purchased land in Bunnacurry which became the location of a Franciscan monastery which, for many years provided an education for local children. The building of the monastery was marked by a conflict between the followers of the Ackle Mission Colony and those building the monastery. The dispute is known in the island folklore as the Battle of the Stones. A notable monk who lived at the monastery for almost 30 years was Brother Paul Carney. He wrote a biography of James Lynch on who rose to fame following his conviction for the 1894 attack on the Valley House in North Ackle. Brother Paul also wrote accounts of his lengthy church fundraising trips across the U.S. at the start of the 20th century. The ruins of this monastery are still to be seen in Bunnacurry today. The Valley House The historic Valley House is located in the valley, near Dugord in the northeast of Ackle Island. The present building sits on the site of a hunting lodge built by the Earl of Cavan in the 19th century. Its notoriety arises from an incident in 1894 in which the then owner, an English landlady named Agnes MacDonald, was savagely beaten and the house set alight, allegedly by a local man, James Lynchon. Lynchon had been employed by MacDonald as her land agent, but the two fell out and he was sacked and told to quit his accommodation on her estate. A lengthy legal battle ensued, with Lynchon refusing to leave. At the time, in the 1890s, the issue of land ownership in Ireland was politically charged, and after the events at the Valley House in 1895 Lynchon was to claim that his actions were motivated by politics. He escaped custody and fled to the United States, where he successfully defeated legal attempts by the British authorities to have him extradited to face charges arising from the attack and the burning of the Valley House. Agnes MacDonald suffered terrible injuries from the attack but survived and lived for another 23 years, dying in 1923. Lynchon is said to have returned to Ackle on two occasions, once in disguise as an American tourist, and eventually died in Girvan, Scotland, in 1937. The Valley House is now a hostel and bar. View of the deserted village from beside the ruins of one of the houses inside the ruins of one of the houses at the deserted village The deserted village close by Dugort, at the base of Slivmore Mountain lies the deserted village. There are approximately 80 ruined houses in the village. The houses were built of unmortared stone, which means that no cement or mortar was used to hold the stones together. Each house consisted of just one room and this room was used as a kitchen, living room, bedroom and even a stable. If one looks at the fields around the deserted village and right up the mountain, one can see the tracks in the fields of lazy beds, which is the way crops like potatoes were grown. In Ackle, as in many areas of Ireland, a system called Rundale was used for farming. This meant that the land around a village was rented from a landlord. This land was then shared by all the villagers to graze their cattle and sheep. Each family would then have two or three small pieces of land scattered about the village, which they used to grow crops. For many years people lived in the village and then in 1845 famine struck in Ackle as it did in the rest of Ireland. Most of the families moved to the nearby village of Dua, which is beside the sea, while some others emigrated. Living beside the sea meant that fish and shellfish could be used for food. The village was completely abandoned which is where the name deserted village came from. No one has lived in these houses since the time of the famine, however, the families that moved to Dua and their descendants, continued to use the village as a bully village. This means that during the summer season, the younger members of the family, teenage boys and girls, would take the cattle to graze on the hillside and they would stay in the houses of the deserted village. This custom continued until the 1940s. Bullying was also carried out in other areas of Ackle, including Anna on Croigon Mountain and in Quran. At Ailt, Keldownet, the remains of a similar deserted village can be found. This village was deserted in 1855 when the tenants were evicted by the local landlord so the land could be used for cattle grazing. The tenants were forced to rent holdings in Curran, Duega, and Slivmore. Others emigrated to America. Keembe recent archaeological research suggests the village was occupied year-round at least as early as the 19th century, 
though it is known to have served as a seasonally occupied Buli village by the first half of the 20th century. A Buli village is a village occupied only during part of the year, such as a resort community, a lake community, or a place to live while tending flocks or herds of ruminants during winter or summer pasturing. Specifically, some of the people of Dua and Pola would migrate in the summer to Slivmore and then go back to Dua in the autumn. The summer 2009 field school excavated Round House 2 on Slivmore Mountain under the direction of archaeologist Stuart Rathbone. Only the outside north wall, entranceway and inside of the Round House were completely excavated. From 2004 to 2006, the Ackle Island Maritime Archaeology Project directed by Chuck Mai was sponsored by the College of William and Mary, the Institute of Maritime History, the Ackle Folklife Center, and the Lighthouse Archaeological Maritime Program. This project focused on the documentation of archaeological resources related to Ackle's rich maritime heritage. Maritime archaeologists recorded a 19th-century fishing station, an ice house, boathouse ruins, a number of anchors which had been salvaged from the sea, 19th century and more recent current pens. A number of traditional vernacular watercraft including a possibly 100-year-old Ackle yawl, and the remains of four historic shipwrecks. Croagon, the third highest sea cliff in Europe's Livmore Mountain dominates the center of the island Kushlangren, also known as Kildana. Castle the cliffs of Croagon on the western end of the island are the third highest sea cliffs in Europe but are inaccessible by road. Near the westernmost point of Ackle, Ackle Head, is Keem Bay. Keel Beach is quite popular with tourists and some locals as a surfing location. South of Keem Beach is Moitoge Head, which with its rounded appearance drops dramatically down to the ocean. An old British observation post, built during World War I to prevent the Germans from landing arms for the Irish Republican Army, is still standing on Moitoge. During the Second World War this post was rebuilt by the Irish Defence Forces as a lookout post for the Coast Watching Service Wing of the Defence Forces. It operated from 1939 to 1945. The mountain of Slivmore, rises dramatically in the north of the island and the Atlantic Drive has some dramatic views. On the slopes of Slivmore, there is an abandoned village the deserted village is traditionally thought to be a remnant village from Engorda Moor. Just west of the deserted village is an old Martello Tower, again built by the British to warn of any possible French invasion during the Napoleonic Wars. The area also boasts an approximately 5,000-year-old Neolithic tomb. Akilbeg is a small island just off Ackle's southern tip. Its inhabitants were resettled on Ackle in the 1960s. A plaque to Johnny Kilbin is situated on Akilbeg and was erected to celebrate 100 years since his first championship win. The villages of Dunavar and Askel have picturesque scenery and the cycle route is popular with tourists. Kashlangren, also known as Kildanet Castle, is a small tower house built in the early 1400s. It is located in Cloughmore, on the south of Ackle Island. It is noted for its associations with Grace O'Malley, along with the larger Rockfleet Castle in Newport. While a number of attempts at setting up small industrial units on the island have been made, the economy of the island is largely dependent on tourism. Subventions from Ackle people working abroad, in particular in the United Kingdom, the United States and Africa allowed many families to remain living in Ackle throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. Since the advent of Ireland's Celtic Tiger economy fewer Ackle people were forced to look for work abroad. Agriculture plays a small role and the fact that the island is mostly bog means that its potential for agriculture is limited largely to sheep farming. In the past, fishing was a significant activity but this aspect of the economy is small now. At one stage, the island was known for its shark fishing, basking shark in particular was fished for its valuable shark liver oil. There was a big spurt of growth in tourism in the 1960s and 1970s before which life was tough and difficult on the island. Despite healthy visitor numbers each year, the common perception is that tourism in Ackle has been slowly declining since its heyday. Currently, the largest employers on Ackle are two hotels. In late 2009 Ireland's only turbot farm opened in the Bonacurry Business Park. Most people on Ackle are either Roman Catholic or Anglican. Overview of the churches for almost two centuries, many artists have had a close relationship with Ackle Island, including the prominent landscape painter Paul Henry. Within the emerging Irish Free State, Paul Henry's landscapes from Ackle and other areas reinforced a vision of Ireland of communities living in harmony with the land. He lived in Ackle for almost a decade with his wife, artist Grace Henry and, while using similar subject matter, the pair developed very different styles. 
This relationship of artists with Ackle was particularly intense in the early decades of the 20th century when the figure of Eva O'Flaherty became a focal point for artistic networking on the island. A network of over 200 artists linked to Ackle is charted in Ackle Painters, an island history and includes painters such as the Belgian Marie Howet, the American Robert Henri, the leading modernist painter Manny Gillette and contemporary artist Camille Souter. The 2018 Coming Home Art and the Great Hunger Exhibition, in partnership with the Great Hunger Museum of Quinnipiac University, USA, featured Ackles. Deserted Village and the Island Lazy Beds prominently in works by Geraldine O'Reilly and Elena O'Kelly, also included was an 1873 painting. Cottage, Ackle Island by Alexander Williams, one of the first artists to open up the island to a wider audience. Hedge schools existed in most villages of Ackle in various periods of history. A university was started by the missions to Ackle in Whelan. In the modern age, there used to be two secondary schools in Ackle, M.C. Hell College and Scoil Domnite. However, in August 2011, the two schools amalgamated to form Colaced P.O. Bale Akla. For primary education, there are eight national schools including Bullsmouth N.S., Valley N.S., Bunakuri N.S., Dukanella N.S., Dua N.S., Saula N.S., Ackle Sound N.S. and Tonreji N.S. National schools closed down include Duega N.S. Crumpon N.S., Ashleem N.S. and Curran N.S. Ackle Island has many bars, cafes and restaurants which serve a full range of food. However, the island's Atlantic location seafood such as lobster, mussels, salmon, trout and winkles are common meals. With a large sheep and cow populations, lamb and beef are popular on the island too. Ackle has a Gaelic football club which competes in the Junior Championship and Division 1E of the Mayo League. There are also Ackle Rovers which play in the Mayo Association Football League. There is a nine-hole links golf course on the island. Outdoor activities can be done through Ackle Outdoor Education Center. Ackle Island's rugged landscape and the surrounding ocean offers multiple locations for outdoor adventure activities, like surfing, kite surfing and sea kayaking. Fishing and water sports are also popular. Sailing regattas featuring a local vessel type, the Ackle Yawl, have been popular since the 19th century, though most present-day yawls, unlike their traditional working boat ancestors, have been structurally modified to promote greater speed under sail. The island's waters and underwater sites are occasionally visited by scuba divers, though Ackle's unpredictable weather generally has precluded a commercially successful recreational diving industry. In 2016, the population was 2,594, with 5. 2% claiming they spoke the Irish on a daily basis outside the education system. The island's population has declined from around 6,000 before the Great Hunger. The table below reports data on Ackle Island's population taken from Discover the Islands of Ireland and the Census of Ireland. Because of the inhospitable climate, few inhabited houses date from before the 20th century, though there are many examples of abandoned stone structures dating to the 19th century. The deserted village at the foot of Slibmore was a bully village, see transhumance the location of the village is relatively sheltered. The best known of these earlier can be seen in the deserted village ruins near the graveyard at the foot of Slibmore. Even the houses in this village represent a relatively comfortable class of dwelling as, even as recently as a hundred years ago, some people still used beehive-style houses. Many of the oldest inhabited cottages date from the activities of the Congested Districts Board for Ireland, a body set up around the turn of the 20th century in Ireland to improve the welfare of the inhabitants of small villages and towns. Most of the homes in Ackle at the time were very small and tightly packed together in villages. The CDB subsidized the building of new, more spacious homes outside of the traditional villages. Some of the recent building development on the island does fit as nicely in the landscape as the earlier style of whitewashed raised gable cottages. Many holiday homes have been built but many of these houses have been built in prominent scenic areas and have damaged traditional views of the island while lying empty for most of the year. Thanks for watching.